the origins of the COVID-19 chronicles are actually quite, a, quite an interesting story. We were at a meeting actually, and the uh, Minister for Health was here and he was listening to us and talking about our preparation and, and meeting many of us. And he pointed to me and said, yes, Dale, we need more experts out there helping to inform the public. So the next day I was called over to the Dean's office and they had an idea, which was a cartoon um, series where I would be the main character. So the COVID-19 Chronicles was designed to teach the public about um, you know, the, the, the true facts and science behind the pandemic. And we thought that the best way to do it was to through a series of cartoons that would uh, be able to engage the public in a, a friendly way at the same time, uh, giving very short, concise uh, information about the pandemic. With comics, we could uh, make it very contextual to the Singapore situation so that uh, people were comfortable with uh, the messages they saw. So we could uh, feature local uh, habits like uh, going to the hawker centre um, and also local speech patterns so that people could relate very well to the messages that were being conveyed. At the start of the pandemic, nobody knew too much about it. And of course, the normal response is to overreact. So everybody was uh, stockpiling uh, essentials or what they thought they were essentials. And it was important for us to give them accurate information about what they should actually do. And so we have uh, Professor Dale Fisher, who is chair of the Global Outbreak and Alert Response Network, who is probably the best person to talk about COVID-19. I've never ever considered being a cartoon character before. Uh, it's not even a box to tick, it's not even on the bucket list. So the messages uh, uh, were tailored to, the, to the, the phase or the, the issues in the outbreak in Singapore at the time. It was from early cases and what to do, what to expect, educating people about what this disease can do, through to circuit breaker, um, when we sensed there might be some frustration in the community, we would work on mental health. Um, how, to, uh, how to do things safely with social distancing. I have to think about the message as simply as possible and then think about how do you persuade a reader to, to listen to that message. A lot of them actually when we're think, I'm thinking of demonstration or metaphor or exaggeration, I just, I just sometimes just look at my own experience because they're most real and most honest and that means people can relate to them because I can relate to them now. There's a likely chance that people can relate to them. Most of the time people will be going to work or just like you know checking through their social media and it's really quick and fast and so I think it delivered well that way. Uh, my favourite comic strip is actually Uniform Blues. It was the very first comic strip that they posted out when the public were like shunning healthcare workers. Yeah, so it basically explains about like the, the precautions that uh, nurses actually take during the COVID times. Even after all the precautions, we are still like shunned by the public. So in that sense, it's very comprehensive. It kind of like gives you a sneak peek onto like what it's like as a healthcare worker in this time. COVID-19 is like a very solemn time, right? Where there's a lot of uncertainty and things like that. But this comics actually like kind of give a little bit of lightheartedness to the situation like it's taking the real life scenarios explaining it but also gives a like a sense of humor so that you know you can have a good laugh despite the trying time so we stopped at uh, 100 comics and uh, but everybody's itching to do another one so we're just waiting for a major update um, that we want to give to the public and when that bit of news comes around, for example, the actual happening of Phase 3 in Singapore, we will probably celebrate it with another comic.